Okay, so we're going to now take up a third category of evidence. Um, and this is actually a category that Darwin used to support his idea of evolution. And that category is called comparative embryology. And it refers to the development, embryology is another term for development uh, from a single egg to um, an adult organism. And once again, Darwin concentrated on looking at the vertebrates. And it was known at the time that all of these organisms, uh, regardless of how different they are as adults, all go through the same stages of development. And that includes um, a period of rapid cell division, followed by a period where cells start to move around. It's called gastrulation. And that's followed by the development of a three uh, layered embryo, and so on. So there's distinct stages that all of these vertebrates go through. Uh, very, very early in development, it's hard to even know by looking at an embryo whether it's going to be a reptile or an amphibian or a mammal because it looks so similar. A fourth category, which is another category that Darwin was able to talk about and did, uh, is what we call biogeography. Which, as I mentioned, is just a, a term that we use for looking at the distribution of living creatures uh, on the planet both present and past. And he pointed out a couple of, of, made a couple of observations and appealed to sense of logic um, to explain these situations as being um, due to uh, change over time from a, an ant, common ancestor. So let's take a look at uh, what he observed. So one thing he observed is if we look at uh, all of the climates and types of environments, across uh, the earth. We see similar climates, uh, similar environments in, in different parts um, of the earth. So for example, there are deserts in most of the major continents. There are forests in most of the major continents. But when we look at the living inhabitants, they very obviously are not similar. They don't seem to be related. So Darwin asked, why is that? Why wouldn't you expect to see in a similar environment the same types of creatures? Um, a second question our observation that he made 
is when he looked at the creatures on the islands, um, inhabitants, islands and compare them to the inhabitants of the nearest mainland or the nearest coast, uh, he found that, that they were clearly related. So for example, when he looked at the Galapagos Islands, and then compared, uh, for example, the finches to the finches on the nearest coast of South America, and that would be uh, the northwestern coast of South America. There were obviously similarities, but when he looked at the Falkland Islands, and remember, the Falkland Islands are on the east, the southern east coast of South America. The inhabitants of these islands were similar to the nearest coastline. But when you compared those Galapagos creatures to the Falkland Islands, even if the, the environments were similar, the in inhabitants were not very similar at all. So Darwin's um, explanation was that the creatures on the Galapagos uh, have an ancestor that arrived from, somehow, from the coast of South America, was blown or carried by a storm to the Galapagos Islands, and then the progeny of that ancestor um, evolved into many different types of finches. And the same with the inhabitants on the Falkland Islands versus the nearest coast of South America. All right, the last category that I want to talk about briefly um, was not discussed by Darwin because he didn't know anything about uh, the molecular nature of inheritance or cells. So this is category five, and then we'll just call this molecular data. Early on in the 1950s, 1960s, uh, there was a lot of work done on comparing proteins across different animal groups, uh, proteins uh, that, were, that are important in different aspects of, um, of life. For example, the hemoglobin molecule is one that's been compared uh, across many different groups, and it is present. There's changes along the way. Um, Probably more convincing is the studies on DNA that look at various genes and how they are so similar across many, many groups. Uh, again, we could look at the hemoglobin gene and if we compare humans to dogs to cats to chimps to uh, all the way down to um, more primitive organisms that have a protein that can bind oxygen, uh, the, the more distant the relationship, the greater the change in the DNA. And we can actually calculate the relationship by how, how many changes have occurred. Uh, so looking at DNA and the genetic information as well as proteins have uh, also provided some data to support the idea that organisms um, have changed, populations of organisms, i.e. species, have changed over time, i.e. have evolved. Okay, that's all I'm going to talk about. That's it. It's 20 minutes.
Um, we'll see. It should be.